equal the Apostle Paul that said Mount Sinai is in Arabia. And of course, Moses, being a Midianite shepherd when he came upon Mount Sinai, and the land of Midian was always Saudi Arabia, never the Sinai Peninsula, that that, of course, is where Mount Sinai would be. Not where Constantine's mommy said it was in the Sinai Peninsula. But, of course, at the time of Constantine, you didn't argue with his mother. Because if you did, you'd get your head cut off. His wife and his eldest son found out the hard way that if you crossed Constantine, he'd kill you. Constantine was never a follower of the Messiah. He was a Roman emperor. He was a sun god worshiper, a worshiper of Sol Invictus Mithra to the very day that he died. All he was doing was making a one world government religion so that he could meld all the paganism in with those Christians that he could not break, got them to compromise, and he developed a new religion at that time. A religion that we're still trying to get out from under. We are still endeavoring to go back to the faith once delivered to the saints because what we've inherited is a very sad religion, in fact. And so it is that Mount Sinai in Arabia, this is where the children of Israel encamped within the rim of this ancient volcano about a mile away from the peak of Mount Sinai. And while we were camped there, Moses went up into the mountain and he met with the Lord. When he went up there, that's when the Lord made a ketubah, an agreement with Moses, and the agreement was this. Go down to the people. You are my messenger. You are my shalom. You are my sent one. You go down to the people and tell them, if they will keep my commandments, I will make them a holy priesthood. They will be priest to the entire world for me. I will make them a set-apart nation. I will make them a people that is holy and set apart from all the people of the world, if they will keep my commandments. And so Moses went down from the presence of the Lord, down to the people, and said, This is what Yahweh says. If you will keep his commandments, he will make you a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a set-apart people. Now. When he came down with that, the people did not know what the commandments were. He just said, if you'll keep my commandments. The people could say, well, what are the commandments? And Moses would have to say, well, that's not part of the deal. You have to agree to keep them first before he even gives them to you. That's the essence of lordship. When you say that someone is lord, that means whatever they say, you will do. You are committing yourself to that person before you even know what the details are. And if you agree to keep his commandments because you have seen that he's delivered you out of the land of Egypt. You have seen that he destroyed Pharaoh's chariots and army in the bottom of the Red Sea when you crossed on dry land. When you saw that, you know that God is your deliverer. Now the question is, will you obey him? Will you keep his commandments even though you don't know what they are? And the people, with one accord, said, yes, we will keep the commandments. We agree to what God is proposing to us. And so then Moses then returns up to the Lord and says, the people have agreed. And so God spoke to Moses and said, I am going to do something that in front of all of the children of Israel, I'm going to do something, manifest my power in such a way that from that moment on, everyone in Israel will believe that you are my sent one. You are my shalom. You are my apostle. You're the one that comes from me and speaks for me to the people. And so that sounded like a good deal for Moses. And then God said to Moses, I want you to go down and tell the people to sanctify themselves for two days. For two days, sanctify yourselves and be ready against the third day. And when the trumpet blows long, then you gather my people unto me in the third day. Moses went back down to the people and told them, Get ready. Sanctify yourselves. Mikvah. Get ready. Cleanse yourself for two days. 
get your garments washed, bleach them out in the sun, get them all ironed up and set them aside and get ready for these two days. And for two days they got ready. And then, on the third day, it says the trumpets began to blow for Mount Sinai. And the people who were over a mile away in the encampment, it says the trumpets were so loud that the people began shaking. They were a mile away, and it was so loud the people began shaking, and then they knew what was to be done. They were to then stop everything that they were doing. They were to wash and put on their white garments, and then when they put on their white garments, then Moses stood in front of everyone, and it says the trumpets became exceeding loud. Whatever loud was that caused them to shake a mile away, now it exceeded loud. And it was so loud that they, a mile away, were shaking. And Moses said, follow me. And they then followed Moses. The millions of Israelites then followed Moses and went up close to the mountain. As they got up to the base of the mountain, as they drew close, they were shaking. Every step of the way was so hard to make. As they were shaking, coming up to the mountain, and underneath it was a pillar of fire. It was like a furnace of fire that came down from heaven and melted the mountaintop. That cloud that completely covered over them, it was such an awesome experience that they just stood there and shook. And then the trumpets abruptly stopped. Boom! Dead silence from the mountaintop. And Moses called out to God, and it says that God answered Moses and said, Moses! Come up hither! Come up here! And Moses then ascended up before the Lord, and he walked right straight up into that furnace of fire in front of all of Israel. And at that moment, Moses did not need any more endorsements on his resume. That was it. God spoke to Moses in front of everyone and said to come up here and anyone that God speaks to, and he walks right up in there. From then on, they are going to believe Moses. And so, when Moses went up there, then God told him to bring the people up closer and bring the 70 elders up even closer. And those 70 elders of Israel went into, literally, onto that sapphire blue floor of the throne room of God and ate a supper there before God. It was there at Mount Sinai when the people were gathered together at the